Hello, my lovely peaches. How are you? It is Sunday, July 30th, 2023, and it's quite late. It's like 9.30. What time is it, actually? I'm not sure. Let's see if I can see it. Nine. It's 9.51 p.m. I'm making a very late dinner. The kids and I went out for two and a half hours, running around doing some errands. I am now officially working full time Monday through Friday, so I just don't have the time that I used to to make videos whenever I wanted to. Not that I was making tons of videos anyway, but I'm making even less videos now that I'm full time working. However, I'm very happy about it because. I like what I'm doing. I see a lot of growth potential and the money that I'll be earning will be enough for me to start saving and actually start shifting my lifestyle in a way that I've been wanting to and intending to and trying to manifest aka live and I feel that it's finally becoming real for me. So I'm in the middle of making dinner and my kids are in the other room playing some video games or maybe they're watching YouTube or something, but. Hello and welcome to my channel and welcome back if you've been here before. First thing I wanna do is to remind you if you've been here before and heard me say this or to tell you for the first time that my opinion of the word manifestation is that it is just a fancy word for saying living. So what you're manifesting is just what you're living. What you're manifesting is what you're doing. What you're manifesting is what your life is. And that is just a basic way of understanding. Manifesting is just simply living. Manifesting is just simply whatever it is that you're creating, whatever your life is, that's what you're manifesting. Festing. And so I just want to take the mystery out of that. You don't need to let me know. Oh, you heard about when so-and-so says this because they say you're wrong about that. I don't care. First of all, it's your reality. And whatever you assume to be true is what's going to be true for you and your experience, no matter what they say, no matter what I say. It's based on your assumptions, not my assumptions. Your reality is based on your assumptions. Second of all, I'm not here for them. I'm here for you. If you choose to trust me and it improves your life, that's all I care about. If you don't, that's not my problem. <laughs> I'm here to help you as best I can. It's ultimately up to you what you believe if you keep putting yourself through the ringer. So I'm gonna teach you what I know works and what you choose to do with the information is on you, okay? So that's the ultimate takeaway of this video. Every second of the day and night, no matter whether you're sleeping, daydreaming, working, intentionally affirming, meditating, just shopping, whatever it is, chatting with your girlfriends or your boyfriends or whatever, your thoughts become things. Your thoughts are things. Your thoughts are manifesting your life all the time. I just wanted to pop in and do a video because I started to listen to Abraham Hicks again a few days ago. And last night I started to listen to Sammy Ingram again. And it's really sort of interesting because I was listening to Sammy Ingram a while ago, maybe a year ago, and I, you know, I did subscribe. I do like her stuff, but a lot of her stuff is the, you can manifest anything you want, regardless of circumstances, which is just not my belief system. I still don't really believe that you can manifest anything you want to, regardless of circumstances. But I heard another YouTuber guy mention her. I think his name is Tim Grimes. And 
uh, I'm not gonna disparage him. Like I kind of like him, but I kind of don't. Like he kind of, he's kind of like I'm real iffy about him because he's just. Uh, my reasons for not liking him are very superficial, so I'm not even gonna explain them. Uh, and there's no need to, but I did see him and I do listen to his stuff. I do like, I like him, but he's kind of like, eh. but anyway, I mean, I can be honest. I don't like his intro where he does that long sort of whiny sound. That is annoying to me. And I also don't like his beard. <laughs> it's just like, like, it's just so overly scraggly. Those are super, super, really super stupid, superficial reasons. Anyways, so yesterday I saw a video where he said Sammy Ingram is a genius. And he was talking about her robotic affirmations teaching. And I still follow her. I'm still subscribed. So I was like, you know what? I haven't watched any of her stuff in a long time, like about a year. So let me just start listening. And... I even put it on one of the one of the videos I was watching and made a comment about because she was talking about if you ever watching a YouTuber or a video of somebody and you get this twinge of like ick, just stop watching it. It's just not for you. But when I was watching her video last night, that exact thing happened. But in the positive, it was a positive twinge of like, this is true. I was listening and I was watching and I felt this like like a bubble up, bubble, a bubble, a bubble, a bubbling up of a bubble feeling of a twinge of a, of a, of a zing of a yes that like, there's truth here. There's truth in this. And it wasn't her talking about, and I just felt it again. And it's not that you can manifest anything you want to part. It's the you can create through your mind. It's the, now I'm using Mike Dooley's thoughts becomes, thoughts become things. But yet I actually was listening last night as well. Let's see, what was that name? I'm going to stop this and find the person's name. Genevieve Bert Bertrand. I listened to an entire audio book of hers called The Invisible Power which is your imagination. Then I listened a little bit to William at William Walker, William Walker Atkinson. I've listened to him before a little bit. And then I was listening to Henry. Oh God. Henry Thomas Hamblin. His, it was an audio book on audio Teca YouTube and it's called right thinking. Now I'm not all in on all of this, but this is just where my my mind stream has been. And then I started listening to some Sammy Ingram and it really zinged me. It really zinged me about the fact that I have waffled. I have oscillated in my thoughts. I have not been consistent I have tried to manifest through my thoughts, but I have not been consistently thinking the same thing. I have often had opposing thoughts, and I want to talk about that, but I got to go get the food. So the other day, I was listening to Abraham Hicks, and I heard her say something so particularly off to me. And it really, like, my brain was like, what? That's not true. And the thing that she said was, when you go to sleep at night, your momentum slows down. And I thought, that's absolutely not true. My momentum doesn't slow down when I go to bed. In fact, dreams are an incredibly powerful manifestation field like for real. And again, I need to reiterate 
For anybody who hasn't watched any of my videos, hello, welcome, and welcome back to everybody who's been here before. And just as a reminder, the word manifestation is just a fancy way of saying living. The word manifestation is that it is just a fancy word for saying living. 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 So what you're manifesting is just what you're living. So manifesting is just living. So whatever you're manifesting is what you're living. And whatever you're thinking about on a daily basis is what you're living. And the manifestation field is open to you at any time. Now, this is, this is the particular thing that I have issue with with Abraham Hicks's teaching, even with some of Neville Goddard's teaching, or any teaching that has a caveat that says, you must go to sleep, you must be not conscious, you must be not awake in order for this to work. And uh, okay, so the first point was, when she said, you know, your manifestation, your momentum slows down during sleep. So Abraham Hicks has this teaching that says, you know, if it's not working, take a nap. And I don't disagree that taking a nap or going to sleep or, you know, just changing the subject altogether, that those are, I don't disagree that those are Helpful. I think, yes, those are helpful. It's helpful to take a nap. It's helpful to change the subject in your mind. It's helpful to, you know what, let's just, let's just let it go. And I'll go back. I'll start again tomorrow. Those things are helpful. However, you don't have to do that. You don't have to start over tomorrow. That's kind of the, the mentality of like, well, I was on a diet, you know, I'm trying to eat right. And because I ate something not right, now I'm going to just fuck off on, fuck all the whole day and night. And I'll start again tomorrow. So I'm just going to like eat like shit for the rest of the day and night because fuck it. I might as well just start again tomorrow. You don't have to start again tomorrow. You can like literally just start again right now. Just like when you catch yourself, if you're upset or you're stressed, or even if you're like having a manic episode of, of sheer bliss, excitement, that's manic. You don't have to wait till tomorrow to catch yourself and to start again or to like take a breath or to step back or to like, you know, same with your posture. If you start to slouch and you realize, oh, fuck, I'm slouching. You don't have to say, well, tomorrow I'll start fresh and I'll go to sleep and I'll just like sit up fresh tomorrow. No, you fucking just, you just do it right then. Like at that instant, in the moment, in the immediate moment that you realize, hey, I'm off on a mental tangent of negativity or hey, I'm slouching or hey, I'm allowing myself to go down a thought path that is not serving me. You're allowed to stop and redirect yourself instantaneously. It's not like the magic is, oh, the magic only works first thing in the morning, or the magic only works while you're asleep, or the magic only works if you're in this specific delta brainwave or theta brainwave. Like, that's just not true. And when we start to put all these rules and regulations and like, well, you know, I have to start again tomorrow. Or, well, when I'm asleep at night, I can't manifest because I'm just asleep. All of those things are, in my opinion, false, junky, limiting belief systems that are actually not true. None of it's true because daydreaming is very powerful. And, and that's also something, side note little ADHD side note I don't have ADHD and every time I've taken a test for it it's like no you don't but there are some characteristics that are labeled ADHD that I have which is like multiple thought trains that can literally go in any direction at any time and they're all connected and they're all going all, all over the place but I am able to 
choose which path I want to jump on and not get completely distracted by it. However, I did want to make a side note that it makes me so sad that so many children and even adults are taught and trained to stop themselves from daydreaming and to think of daydreaming as a bad thing and to think of daydreaming as a distraction and as a thing that makes you not focus and a thing that keeps you away and takes you away from all the positive things that you're trying to accomplish and your goals and all that stuff. And it's really sad and heartbreaking because in fact, daydreaming is a powerful tool of magical creation, your magical imagination. And daydreaming is very powerful and it's an extremely powerful tool that more people need to allow themselves to do and to get into. And when you allow yourself to get the, gotta get the dinner. Okay. Uh, my blow up bed is very loud sounding. All right. I got 11 more minutes to cook vegan meatless balls with the vegan mozzarella cheese and the pasta, the pasta. So I'm really not intending to make this super long. The main important gist, the takeaway of this video is to say, you can powerfully manifest your thoughts become things any time of the day or night, whether you're sleeping, awake, whether you're daydreaming, whether you're night dreaming, whether you're intentionally sitting there and affirming thoughts to thoughts to bring yourself into the state of believing or to affirm thoughts that stand from the state of believing or whether you're busy working and you're not even thinking about what it is you're trying to manifest specifically because you're just busy trying to work. You're just, you're just busy working. You're focused on work. But in the meantime, there's always like these background programs running. We always have these, the cogs in the wheels spinning and the underneath and the foundation of our belief system, the unseen alignment that I've talked about in other videos. There's the background noise. There's all the stuff, the things in your subconscious, your, your deep levels, all your memories, all of these things happening. The programs in your mind that you think are closed, but they're actually still running. They're running in the background. And all of these things that are impacting how we think about ourselves, how we show up in the, in the world, and what we actually manifest, what we actually live, what we're actually experiencing, how we relate to other people, how other people relate to us, all of these things, how we interact, how those interactions make us feel, how those interactions make other people feel, how we interpret those interactions, how what other people do spark thoughts in our mind that become things that we act on. For example, one of my clients the other day had a thought that was sparked because I said something and she thought that I went ahead and purchased something that I did not purchase. And she said, hey, did you purchase this thing? Which I did not purchase. And before I even had a chance to respond to her, I got all these additional negative, suspicious thoughts that were just spewing out because she had a thought and then she believed that thought, which was not true. And then that untrue thought spawned a bunch of other thoughts that were not true and then that all led for her led her into acting on blasting those thoughts out into the world to me in a message in multiple messages which then turned into an unhappy situation because now her fucking bullshit thoughts she's spewing out to me and I'm like ho 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 hold the fuck up why are you saying this shit none of this shit is true Okay, and the point is that thoughts become things and whether you act on those things 
or you just have that thought running in the background of your mind like a program on the computer that you don't even realize is actually open and running and taking up all this memory and, and processing power and actually creating frameworks and a perception and an overlay and an underlay and background visuals and all this crap background noise that is all stemming from what you actually believe about yourself that you may or may not even be aware of. And that's not really the point of this video. The point of this video is to really say what you're thinking about, what you're imagining is impacting what you are creating in your life all the time. And your ability to intentionally decide what you're going to think about and that feeding into your manifestation is accessible to you all day all night whether you're awake whether you're half asleep whether you're fully asleep whether you're dreaming whether you're dreaming night dreams whether you're daydreaming daydreams that you're just spacing out and daydreaming unintentionally or you intentionally daydream or whether you're sitting there and meditating which is allowing yourself to sit there and let thoughts come and go without judgment and without reacting and without getting hooked and that's a practice that can take a lifetime to master the point is that no matter what state you're in your thoughts are things and they are determining your life they are determining how you feel they are determining what you manifest they are determining what is created in your life now i do not believe that you individually are in charge of everybody and that you are creating everybody but what i do believe is that you are in charge of yourself and you are creating yourself and that you have the power to determine how you want to show up, how you want to focus your attention on what you want to focus it on. And that power is available to you all the time. You can make an intention to lay in bed. You can lay in bed and you can say to yourself, I'm going to start to think about X, Y, Z. And then you start to think about that. Now, you cannot control 100% what you end up dreaming about. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that, you know, you have the power to 100% lucidly dream and 100% control everything that you dream about. I'm not saying that. But I am saying that your dreams are a tool that could be accessible to you. You could potentially intentionally dream about a specific subject you could say to yourself you know what I had this dream last night or last month or 10 years ago and it it didn't go the way I wanted it to or it ended on a cliffhanger somebody was about to tell me something and then I never I woke up and I never got to get that message you can intentionally go back into that dream and determine the outcome and of course I have to mention Dr. Robert Moss? Oh, let me find his name. Yes, Dr. Robert Moss. He is a dream guru and he talks a lot about how you can learn to lucid dream. You can learn to intentionally go back into your dreams. You can learn to basically harness the magical power of your dreams and all the manifestation, the tools, the guidance that is accessible to us in our dreams. That is something that is so unbelievably powerful. And I feel that I really wanted to mention that in high contrast to what Abraham Hicks talks about as far as, you know, the momentum dies down during sleep and 
basically like all of our thoughts and all of our anger and all that stuff just dies down. That's just not true. It's just simply not true. Anybody who suffers from insomnia knows that. Anybody who suffers from nightmares or restless dreams or um, you know the dissatisfaction of dreams being recurring and yet never like I have a recurring dream where I'm lost basically. I'm almost always in this big alarm for the food. <laughs> Gotta get the food. Back on the bed. All right, so my meatless balls with my vegan mozzarella. It's all heated up. I gotta go get it. So the point that I really wanted this hopefully kind of short video to be is to dis agree with the idea that momentum stops at night, that daydreaming is any less powerful than anything other than like intentional affirmations. Daydreaming can be just as powerful. Daydreaming is like daydreaming is manifesting thoughts. Like, where do you think this comes from? Why do you think we have this? People try to categorize daydreaming as a distraction or somebody who's not doing what they're supposed to. And yeah, maybe you're not doing what you're supposed to because you're not studying this or that or the other thing. Or, you know, you're supposed to be working on this project and you're just fucking daydreaming. But literally daydreaming is the power to harness your imagination and to create worlds that don't currently exist through the power of your imaginal world, which you can access in a daydream state. You can dream at night, you can dream the day. I have a video, I have several videos where I talk about how to, methods how to recall dreams better and how to retain our dreams and how to use them as a powerful manifestation tool. Everything is just a tool. Buddhism teaches that all of the methods that they teach are just methods. They're just there to get you to the next place. It's not meant to be something. It's not like, here, take this pill and you're going to need it for the rest of your life. That's a Western way of thinking. A Western way of thinking is you're ill, you need some care and we're going to give you this method that's going to be lifelong you're basically now stuck here you're never going to actually heal you're going to be in this treatment forever eastern way of thinking talks about healing and getting back to balance it talks about being in deficit it talks about being in excess and it talks about health as the balance of the right amount. Not too little of the things you need, not too much of the things you need, not trying to replace a void of something that's missing with an excess of something that's not the thing that you need, which I've talked about before as well, that you can't fulfill a need by excessive overdoing it with something else if you need a I need a I don't have a well I cannot satisfy the need for a by doubling down tripling down quadrupling up on B just because I have 10 times more B than I need that is not going to satisfy the fact that I need a so what what am I saying I'm saying that balance comes from I need the right amount of A and I need the right amount of B. I cannot be in health if I don't have any A and I have only the only B. You understand? And the Western way of thinking 
doesn't really seem to understand that. It's more like trying to kill things and trying to artificially install things instead of bringing you back to harmony. So daydreaming can be bringing you back to harmony. Dreaming when you're asleep can be bringing you back to harmony. You can find answers to things in daydreams and in sleep mode and anytime. There's no specific special time of day or night or, or specific way of thinking or way of daydreaming or way of imagining or visualizing or you have to write it down or you have to repeat it X amount of times or you have to see it in a specific certain only type of framework. None of that stuff is true. All of that stuff is limiting junkie belief systems. The fact is that we are all manifesting every second of every day and night. Your thoughts become things. Your thoughts are becoming things. Your thoughts are becoming the things that you then act on. The things that you think about are the things that you talk about. The things that you talk about are the things that you act on. The things that you act on are the things that you create. The things that you create are your manifestations. The things that you are creating are the things that you're living. And the things that you're living are your manifestations. So what you think and what you feel and what you say and what you do and how you live and how you show up, that is your manifestation. You're doing it every second of the day. You're not good at manifestation or bad at manifestation. You're either aware of it and doing it intentionally or you're unaware of it and you're just blindly manifesting. That's why I talk about your unseen alignments. Now the thing that Sammy Ingram was talking about, which I thought was pretty interesting. And I watched like a shit ton of her videos between yesterday and today. And I mean, I was watching basically everything that was within, let's say the last like two or three months. I was like catching up on those. I think there was a couple, like there was something from Christmas time. So there was a few in there that were maybe a little bit older, but most of what I was watching, and like I said, it is July 30th of 2023. And I was watching mostly things from the last three months. And it just was really clicking with me. Everything where she was talking about, like, oh, this is what I was trying to say, that she was talking, so I talk a lot about doing the work not just doing the spiritual bypass that Abraham Hicks talks about, like if you're in a bad mood or if you're in a bad mind state. She talks about, you know, getting into the better feeling, feeling, reaching for the better feeling thought, reaching for the thought that feels better. And I do agree with that in a lot of ways. However, I also feel that if you just always do that and you never take the time to get deep into your shit, and actually heal the trauma, then you know you can spiritually bypass and reach for the better feeling feeling forever and never actually like get to that place where you relating healthier, healthier. And today I listened to one of Sammy Ingram's videos where she was talking about this pretty much exactly like some teachers teach that no, you know, you should you need to stay with that feeling. You need to sit in that feeling. You need to be with the feeling so you can let it go. And I haven't exactly talked about it in that sense. Like, I don't believe that you have to feel like shit. I say do the work and heal. I'm not talking about you need to go through the trauma and feel the pain and be in the pain. That's not what I mean. What I mean about do the work don't spiritual bypass. What I'm talking about is figure out what you're aligned with by looking at it. Okay. Me being able to come to the understanding that my unseen alignment, my deeper truth was that the reason that I haven't manifested a 
loving romantic partner is because my deeper unseen truth was that I didn't believe that, that, that I was worthy of that. The reason I haven't manifested a house for myself is not because I'm not capable or I'm not skilled or that I'm not able to earn money or that I'm not able to save or that I'm not intelligent enough to go through the process because in fact, 25 years ago, I did buy a fucking house. Okay. But the reason it hasn't happened for me is because I never actually believed deep down that I deserved it. So just like when the guy who I bought the house with was my first ex-fiance, when he proposed to me and I knew at that very moment that I wanted to say no, that I wasn't in love with him that way, that I didn't want to get married to him. I also knew at that moment that I wasn't ready to say no, I wasn't ready to break up right then. And that ultimately he wasn't the right guy for me, but I was too fucking afraid to say it. I didn't know how to say it. And so instead of saying, no, I don't want to do that with you, I said, yes. And then we ended up buying a house and I was very miserable and I ended up leaving and walking away from him and the house. And all these years I've wondered, why have I never been able to get myself to buy the house and it took a long time for me to finally be able to understand through a process of self-reflective introspective analyzation of myself I needed to go through that I needed to do that I needed to unblock my blacked out childhood trauma that was the real cause of my true fucked up beliefs about myself. And I needed to see it so I could freaking learn. Oh, that's the bullshit that I'm believing, which is what is being reflected back into my reality. And until I understood it, which I could not do just by think, reaching for a better feeling feeling, just reaching for the better feeling feeling was never going to help me heal because I couldn't just keep avoiding it and ignoring it and never fucking facing that pain. Okay. I had to, I had to, and that might not be true for you. And you might not like that. And maybe just saying, fuck all, I don't need to get in there and deep down understand it all. All I need to do is like reprogram myself that I do deserve it. Like no matter why I believed I didn't deserve it it doesn't matter really ultimately as long as I'm able to believe I do deserve it and that could potentially be true like that might be true for you and you personally might not need to go all up in that motherfucker and figure it out but I had to like I had to and I wanted to and so that was the path that worked for me and the other thing is that I had spent you know like 25 20 29 years 30 some years 35 years not diving deep into it and figuring it out and that was causing me miserable terrible relationship after another and so I got to like my rock bottom basically where it was like okay I can't just keep running and running and moving and moving and Avoiding and avoiding and avoiding. It's time for me to fucking go into that shit. Deep dive into that fucked up shit of my childhood and figure out what the fuck. What is it? What What the fuck is the programming in there? Because this shit is doing some wonky fucking shit. And I'm not intending that. None of my intentions are coming out right. And that's because there's some fucked up programming in there that I don't know what the fuck it is. And just thinking happier thoughts is not going to do it for me. Okay. And so in that sense... No, I couldn't just reach for the better feeling feeling. I needed to go through it. Now, now that I know what the fuck I'm up against, now that I know what I'm dealing with, now that I know what those thoughts were and where they came from, why they're there, how they even served me for a long, long time. All of the things that, held me back that made me unable to manifest true love 
that made it so that I didn't achieve my fullest potential. The things that made it so that my most powerful energetic sources of magical creation were locked down, trapped in that locked up place. All of that was true for me. And in order for me to be able to create my ultimate best creations, I personally had to unlock it because it was trapped in my trauma. And that was the path that was right for me. And so it felt right to me. It feels right to me. But it also feels right to me that at some point, which is now, that I don't have to continuously relive the pain and the trauma and that now I can actually move forward, move through it and heal from it and actually now I can reach for a better feeling thought or a better feeling feeling because I know what I'm healing. I know how to correct it because I know what I was doing or, or I, I know the thoughts that were not helpful. I know what thoughts were holding me back. I know what thoughts were protecting me from being vulnerable. I know what kind of thoughts were happening in the unseen field of my mind that were actually there because that was how I had to get through my childhood without continued traumatized experiences and I had to also recognize that you know what it served me for decades but now it's holding me back just like the training wheels that served you at some point if you ever got to learn how to ride a bike like that they served you at some point okay but then at some point also it's time to let them go because they're holding you back and that's true for all things, just like a crutch. If you sprained your foot or uh, if you hurt your arm or something and you need a cast, it's there to help you, to serve you, but not forever. Not for you to now rely on it as if, you know, it's, it's a permanent fixture. But learning how to break that cast off or to get rid of those crutches or to get rid of those limiting belief systems or belief structures that were protective in a war zone or a traumatic family place. But now in this adult world of wanting to have healthy, beneficial, mutually abundant, happy, joyful, in intimate, connected, vulnerable, real relationships, that cast and that crutch and those things are now hindering me, now getting in the way, now problematic. And the ultimate truth is that my thoughts are creating my reality and those thoughts happen in the daytime when I'm awake, first thing in the morning, when I'm half sleeping in the bed, when I'm drifting off to sleep, when I'm busy working away and there's some background programs running, basically at all times, when you're driving in your car and you don't think you're thinking about anything, but you all the time, all the time, look, look at this cute kid. Where's the Wi-Fi password? It's on, the, it's on my computer there, babe. Mm -hmm. Um, it might be covered up by that post-it note. It's all the way on the bottom. You see it says like F something. Mm -hmm. it's Eva something. Okay. Eva. Well, honey, did you want to put the meatless balls in the bread to make like a parm? Uh -huh. I can do that. All right. So it's time for me to go eat dinner. And hopefully this video has some type of cohesive cohesion some type of th overall thought that makes sense that 
the the message of this video is really to say every second of the day your thoughts can be powerfully manifesting for you so that's the ultimate takeaway of this video every second of the day and night no matter whether you're sleeping daydreaming working intentionally affirming meditating just shopping whatever it is chatting with your girlfriends or your boyfriend or whatever your thoughts become things your thoughts are things your thoughts are manifesting your life all the time and what's powerful about knowing that is that there's like a magical power accessible to you at any time that at any given moment in the day or night in a daydream state and in an intentional state in a meditative state in a busy I'm working state in and I'm just chilling state and I'm cleaning up state every single thing that you're doing taking a shower making dinner walking exercising all of it, all of it, all of those states are moments where you're thinking. And all of the moments where you're thinking are moments where you can be intentional. And all of the moments where you can intentionally decide what you want to think about, those are moments that you are impacting your life intentionally. So, just like you can wake up every day and eat and drink whatever you want to without thinking about it, without thinking about how it's impacting your health or your weight or your energy or your mood or, you know, whether you have allergies or not or whether you're bloated or not bloated or whether you have a lot of mucus or not or whether your breath stinks, all of these things. We can wake up every day and we can just eat whatever we want and have no type of guidance, no boundaries, no intention, no guidance, and have no understanding of how these choices are impacting our mood and our skin and our voice and our health and our breathing and our energy and all of that stuff. You could be somebody who is literally obsessed about it and counts every calorie, writes down every single nut, every lentil, every piece of lettuce, every drop of water, every speck of sugar that you consume. You can write that down. That can be your way. Or, you know, you like I kind of, okay, so I'm vegan. So I know automatically everything I eat is going to be dairy free, animal free. Okay, nothing I eat is going to have dairy or animal products, including honey. Okay, I did buy Burt's Bees and I have, um, I have, I do have a, a roll of Burt's Bees lip balm that I know has some honey in it and I do occasionally use it. Okay, so that's, that's like, ah, I've done that. Okay. And um, I have occasionally let my son buy a lemonade that had a little bit of honey in it. Okay. But beyond that, I don't eat things if they have animal product in it. And so I don't need to, I don't need to remind myself of that every single day. I'm vegan. It's a part of who I am. It took me like three years to transition from vegetarian to vegan. And in that time, it was hard. It was very hard for me because at that time, I still harbored thoughts and beliefs that it's not that bad, that milk isn't the same as eating the flesh of a cow because ignorance why? Because I didn't know the truth. My beliefs were based on thoughts that were based on falsehoods, lies, industry lies that you're taught literally from being a little kid and they teach you cows make milk. 
uh, human ladies make milk as well, but we only make milk because we're pregnant and we have a baby to feed, just like a cow. They don't teach you that though. Okay, so I was literally indoctrinated from a little girl with fucking lies. Calcium does the body good. Milk, you need milk. All of that stuff was lies. And I was suffering with actual medical illnesses because of the dairy that I was eating. And yet my parents believed that I needed dairy for health. Do you understand? Like, do you understand where I'm getting at? You can have beliefs that harm you. You can have beliefs that are not true. You can every day blindly behave and show up on beliefs that you're not even aware of. Sometimes beliefs are so ubiquitous. They're so everywhere that you don't even realize that it is a belief structure and not a reality. Like, for example, the fact that eating dead animals and their lactation is not the only option. Like where I live, it's not a vegan world. And most people, not as much these days, but when I was growing up, say to somebody, I'm vegetarian or I'm vegan, and they're just like, I can't even, I can't even comprehend what you would eat. Like, are you eating grass and cardboard? Like, that's where their mind would go. Why? Not because those are the only options available to vegan people, but because that's where their brain stops. It's like, the Shel Silverstein book, Where the Sidewalk Ends. It's like where your brain ends. Like if you can't fathom it because your brain literally just stops. Like there, do you understand what I'm saying? It's not that there are not options available. It's that your brain can't fathom them. So it's your limited ability to think of new things that is why you can't see past that not because those things don't exist and that is true of anything and everything you know it's like i have not yet been able to manifest the amount of money that i would need to be able to buy the house in the town where i live like i can see myself potentially being able to have a house but the place where I can mentally imagine myself like, yes, I can have X amount of money per month that I could put towards a house, that amount does not work in the reality of the town that I live in, that I grew up in, that's my hometown, that I love, that I don't really want to move out of. I need triple that. So my mind does not have the ability right now on this moment, like I'm, I'm working on it. But it's not wired right now to just automatically believe that I could easily earn the amount of money, three times amount, what I'm earning now, to be able to buy a house in the town where I want to be. And I don't, I can't like see where I would want a house that falls within the amount of money I can earn now. Okay, so I'm, uh, right now my life is sort of caught in this place of not going anywhere where it comes to where I'm going to live other than just staying where I'm at because I can't fathom earning enough money to have a house here and so I'm not but up until just like a few weeks ago a couple months ago I couldn't even fathom having a house because of my unseen alignment which was aligned with me not believing that I was worth that. And I had to go through all these years of self-reflective introspection to get to the place where I now recognize, oh, I have all these junky belief systems because of all my particular traumas that I went through and all those things and how those then determined how I would see myself, how I defined myself, my worldview of myself within that family structure and how that became my worldview of myself within the larger world. And now that I'm aware of it all, and like Sammy Ingram says, I don't have to spend another 20 years, 25 years getting to the point where I'm like, oh, now that I can see it all, now I know, oh, I am worthy of that house. I could earn triple the amount of money I'm earning even though I can't actually physically, mentally imagine it right this moment, like how could I earn four times the amount of money I'm earning? Like consistently, 
Like, what would I take? What would I have to do? What are the steps that I need to take? What is the business plan? What is the action plan? What is the next 10 things that I need to do in order to get to the place where I can earn four or five or six times the amount of money? Where actually buying a house in this town where I want to be suddenly becomes a complete, absolute reality. And not a fantasy that could never happen in a million years. Or like the budget that I did like two months ago where, or it wasn't two months ago, it was more like a month ago or less, where my budget was that I'll be able to buy a house in um, 60 years. 59 and a half years from now. And I'm going to be dead probably. I'm going to be about dead. So I'm not, I, I don't think that's, that That ain't it. That That's not the plan. That's not the plan for me. Because if I have to wait 60 more years, uh, no. So at the moment I'm like, well, I don't know. I don't know where all this, the new bigger numbers that I need to punch into that budget to make it actually happen. Like, oh, I can buy a house now. I don't see it all. I don't see all the ways of it happening. But I do know that every second of the day, I can be thinking about it. And it doesn't matter if I'm asleep. It doesn't matter if I have to wait till tomorrow. It doesn't matter if I'm daydreaming. It doesn't matter if I'm making it up on purpose. It doesn't matter if I'm sitting here and I'm thinking to myself, I am going to imagine myself where I look at my paycheck and it is 10 times more than what it is today. And that that just becomes so normal. I have no idea how it would happen. I have no idea all the steps I would need to take to make that reality reality. But I can fantasize about it. I can daydream about it. And I can allow myself to daydream about it. And I can, I can see the benefit of the daydreaming about it. Just like I can allow myself to say... I am absolutely loved by my partner, my spouse-to-be. There is a man out there floating around, living, breathing, doing things right now. And he is the exact man to be my husband. And I'm the exact woman to be his wife. And maybe we know each other, or maybe we don't. I don't know, but I know for sure that we're about to link up like now. And I don't need to know all the details of everything in order for me to know that that's true. And I can powerfully manifest intentionally anytime I want to. And so can you. And that's where I'm going to end this. I'm hungry, happy. See you in the next one. Bye. I hope this was helpful in some way or at least entertaining. All right, so the video is already incredibly long enough, but I really just had the thought and I wanted to just add it because it still has to do with the concept that there are time constraints on our creative power. Unnecessary in my mind, unnecessary time constraints being put on creative power and Another instance where someone who I love and adore and who I highly appreciate their teaching is Julia Cameron in her book, The Artist's Way, and the method that she came up with, which she calls Morning Pages, which is her method of a process of the instant you wake up, you automatically stream of consciousness write three uncensored pages of thoughts and the way the way that she teaches it is that it has to be first thing in the morning as soon as you wake up and she believes that for her particular method and her particular purpose her particular teaching of her particular process that she came up with that she calls the morning pages has to be done. Excuse me, this is a kid walking in on my video. No. Oh, I did. Yes, it's in the windowsill. Actually, I was using it. 
I was using it to prop up my phone. Okay, so the point of this pop in to this extremely long video is to just say, while I don't discredit Julia Cameron in teaching her own thing that she came up with, the morning pages, which she believes it's most effective if you do it in the morning, I have always felt that if I can do it in the morning, great. However, the fact that sometimes I stream of consciousness write out in a journal my thoughts, even though it's not first thing in the morning, does not discount the creative power and the benefit, multiple levels of benefits of doing the process anytime, day or night. So I just wanted to pop in to this video to say another thing that I thought of that for the specific purpose of the teaching as Julia Cameron teaches it as the morning pages, the fact that she says you do it first thing in the first moment you wake up, I'm not discrediting the power of that. However, I'm saying that sometimes in all things that we do, we can put these unnecessary time constraints that make it difficult for us to do the thing or make us put this procrastination on a thing. Oh, I'll get to it tomorrow. Well, I didn't do it first thing in the morning, so therefore I'm not gonna bother sitting writing in a journal. And the point of this is to say, whether it's writing in a journal or doing a meditation or doing affirmations or fi fixing your posture because you just realized that you were slouching and you know you allow yourself to benefit from the thing in the moment of the thing i put my ring light on because i wanted better lighting but it's dark because it's late and it just feels better right now at this lighting and the point is that sometimes the thing is best if you do it at a specific time there are things in life that you have to do at a specific time because like you can't do it if the thing isn't open let's say let's say there's a store you want to go to you gotta go when they're open, unless it's an online store and you can purchase the thing online, then then that, that boundary isn't true. Uh, you know, um, some people sleep at night, but other people sleep, like I just was having a conversation with someone and she said, well, this person goes to bed at 7 p.m. And I said, are they like super old? Like I, I tried to, I was just like, I'm not trying to be ageist. I just like, who goes to bed at that age? I mean, at that time. And then she said, well, she, she works at 1 a.m. because she works with um, international people and that's the time that they work. So, and I was like, oh, okay. Now it makes absolute sense. Before, when you said she goes to bed at 7 p.m. and she's not a seven-year-old, she's a grown woman, it made literally no sense to me because in the framework of what I know, it didn't make sense. But then as soon as you said, oh, she wakes up at one o'clock in the morning and then by 7 p.m. she's been up. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. So the point of all of this is to just say whether it's Julie Cameron's The Morning Pages or what time you go to bed at night or whether you're a night owl or a morning person or what time you get up to go to work. Even in this same example, people often say, oh, you can't be successful if you sleep late. You can't be successful unless you get up at four o'clock in the morning. But everybody's circumstance is unique and specific to, to you. So time is all relative. Right? Like right now, it is 12, 18 a.m. Damn. Nah, I didn't realize that it was that late. <laughs> okay, it's actually Monday, July 31st. It's super early, even though I actually started making this on Sunday. Okay, but somewhere, it's 
earlier than right now and somewhere else it's later and then whenever you are watching this is going to be a different day and time the point is that we can put all kinds of restrictions on when we're allowed to think when we're allowed to dream when we're allowed to do you know writing in our journal when we're allowed to exercise when we're allowed to eat when we're allowed to do all kinds of things when we're allowed to pray when we're allowed to sleep when we're allowed to be awake when we're allowed to drink this or that when we're allowed to eat or make love or all the stuff when we're allowed to create when we're allowed to earn money some people say you're only allowed to earn money after a certain age you're only allowed to do these dreams after now there are some things you know when it comes to sex and there's always age of consent which should be in my mind like 21 years and older but at least minimum 18 okay there yeah 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 always 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 restrictions boundaries okay but i'm talking about thoughts and creation and affirming yourself and and being creative and all the good things all the juicy juicy creative things in life we don't have to do it only in the daytime in the nighttime in the this time in the okay you don't have to wait till tomorrow that's my point